Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter one talking about 1.5 that is improving the test process and today we shall be looking forward to the next sub segment that is 1.5.3 Analytical Based Test Process Improvement Approaches and would understand how exactly organizations can look forward to internally handle the improvement process and use their own data to define the improvement plan. Well, as a part of our previous tutorial, we already discussed that how exactly industry benchmarks can be used like TMMI and TPI Next can use uh, can be used within an organization to define and standardize the process or also look forward to improvise it to the industry levels. But at the same time, as we discussed initially in our first topic about improvement of the test process, we told you that an organization can always get started internally as well by using their historical data. And that's what is analytical process or analytical based test improvement process. So here the organizations look forward to collect data from their historically completed projects. And at the same time, maybe if there's a project ongoing, they also look forward to see what more we can do about it. But mostly as a project gets completed, we have a good amount of actual data with us. And based on that, we can look forward to collect more information or basically analyze the real problems and then look forward to define a plan for the next set of project. And that is where analytical based uh, process improvement could be of great help by using your own existing information because sometimes your problems are best known to you and there are no industry standards which may talk about your product, your project or maybe your organization which is very particular to you itself. So that is where we are trying to understand what kind of methodologies do we have under analytical based but before that let's have a quick introduction to what is analytical based test process improvement. Right here, of course, by using model-based approaches, we know that the improvements are introduced by comparing the test approach to uh, of a project or a team to an external best practice, whereas analytical approaches identify problems based on the data from the project or the team itself. Appropriate improvements can be derived from an analysis of these problems, whereas analytical approaches can be used together with a model-based approach to verify results and provide diversity. The last line is a little extra to understand that when it comes to the uh, analytical, of course, we are using our own data. So it can be easily blended with the model based approaches, which is more of like when the TMMI foundation would come into your organization to assess your process, they would certainly be looking forward to your historical data to analyze and at the same time define what can be best done at this point of time. However, their goal will be from the industry point of view, but data certainly remains your organization specific but that's the point where we say that a model base can also bring their own philosophy to make sure that what exactly you can do to make it better but here we would understand your pain points and provide solutions very appropriately so certainly a test manager can hire a consultant to do this job or test manager himself or herself can be responsible to do this job as well also to add here of course uh, problems can be identified by using Quantitative and qualitative data, analytical based test process improvement approach introduces analytical approaches that mainly use quantitative data from the test process and data from the defects to assess the current approach. Keeping it very straightforward when you talk about the two words that is qualitative and quantitative, the qualitative is more of like the understanding, the belief, the confidence, what we have. For example, when I'm, I've been interacting with the system for a long time, like probably like one year, at the end of the one year, I would certainly have some level of confidence with me where I can verbally explain to you that so far we have executed a great number of test cases and have resulted into so many failures, which has found around say 30 defects so far. And these 30 defects are those critical defects which we anticipated. And I pretty much feel that this particular system is now ready to go live and uh, there may not be any critical failures. Now, this particular thing is what you call it as a qualitative data, which is felt, which is observed by interacting with help of the people. But quantitative is, are those numbers which are basically represented from the monitoring. Now, we talk about the number of defects. We now talk about the number of test cases, where exactly we had poor detection, where exactly we have better detection, what kind of levels are resulting into better defect identification, or even if you talk about coverages. So these numbers become my quantitative data. 
So qualitative and quantitative data both are helpful in this, but at the same time, quantitative data is seen as a baseline to do the analytical based improvement of the process. Also to add here, retrospective introduces a retrospective in which the qualitative data regarding that what worked well and what does not work well is collected from the development and the test team members. Data analysis is important for objective uh, test process improvement and a valuable support to purely qualitatively assess uh, which may otherwise result in imprecise recommendations that are not supported by the data. So we're just giving you a heads up. However, we have a separate talk to, topic to talk about it, which is retrospective. So at the end of the retrospective, certainly we look forward to collect the data uh, from what happened. And again, we'll deep dive into retrospective a little later, so not to worry about that. But yes, retrospective is that event or that ceremony where we sit together to discuss what worked for us and what did not. And this data can be collected from this particular ceremony as well, which is one thing which happens for the same purpose that is to collect the data itself. Also to add here, we have some of the great techniques to talk about. So applying an analytical approach to improvement most often involves a quantitative analysis of the test process to identify problem areas and set project specific goals. The definition and measurement of key parameter is required to assess the test process and evaluate whether improvements are successful. And these analytical approaches include root cause analysis, analysis using measures, matrices and indicators, and the GQM, which is goal cushion matrix approach. So these three different techniques <clears throat> or approaches uh, really bring a lot of great e efficiency to the process improvement. But however, the names are very straightforward. Root cause analysis will give me the root causes of all the failures so that we know where exactly we are going wrong. The monitoring matrices and the measures what we have would again give us that what is more efficient, what is not efficient, right? And GQM is something specific. So let's go and deep dive into these three approaches and try understanding what exactly they mean. So to add here, <clears throat> of course, the first one is root cause analysis. So keeping it to the point is basically the study of the root causes and uh, it allows the identification of solution that remove the causes of problems rather than merely addressing the immediate obvious symptom. So we are not, not worried about like what exactly is happening on the screen or maybe uh, if we have seen a problem uh, from someone about a particular activity, about a particular test where we are more interested in why is it happening? What is the exact reason behind that? And when we go into the root cause analysis, we basically get to the root. And if we fix the root, the problem from the root, the shoots will be happy again. So that's exactly the point is, the root cause analysis being an analytical approach basically collects data on the root causes of several problems and you know loopholes in the process. And we look forward to improvise the root causes rather than that of what the problem is. Also to add here a possible analysis, <coughs> Uh, procedure uh, would involve selecting an appropriate set of defects, identifying clusters in the data, and using cause effect diagram, which is also known as FISH1 diagram, to identify the root causes of important defect clusters. Improvements are then derived to present similar defect from occurring. I think uh, we all understand what is cause effect graphing. Anyhow, this is not in our syllabus anywhere, like it was there in the test analyst some time back, but they removed it. So if you want, you can just quickly do, it looks like more like, you know, you have fishbone diagram, multiple causes resulting into a particular effect. So we basically draw that so that we understand how exactly things are being uh, contributing to a particular outcome. And based on that, we can work on different causes. So yes, we just said that this is what we can use as an add-on to uh, the root cause analysis as approach for analytical. And uh, the, the diagram can help us to get more insights about uh, the process which is happening and what are the various causes resulting into one particular outcome and then we can particularly work on all the causes uh, to eliminate them. The other technique of course is pretty straightforward. We told you measures, matrices and indicators and are basically used as again a quantitative manner and to assess how well the test process in the project or team is performed. The key attribute of the test process is to be considered our effectiveness, efficiency and predictability. For each of these attributes, one or several matrices can be selected. By collecting and analyzing corresponding data, the key areas requiring, requiring improvement can be identified. So a very simple example, 
assume that if I'm comparing unit testing versus system testing as one of my activity, and I have been doing monitoring throughout the test process, which you know. So during the system testing, I see that we found uh, really a big number of defects, like around plenty of number, like say 50, and unit testing resulted into 10 defects only, just a hypothetical scenario. And uh, 50 defects, when we did the root cause analysis of these data, we analyzed that it is uh, related to a unit that is component. Now, two important things what we can derive from here. Now, we are not talking about root cause analysis. We are just going by the number of defects and the level of testing. So unit testing found 10 defects, system testing found 50 defects. When we did analysis, we found that 50 defects out of 50, 20 defects were related to unit. Now, what, it, what is my conclusion on this number of uh, defects identified is that system testing is efficient in identifying defects, okay? Even those which unit testing misses out. So I know my proficiency that system testing is doing great, but at the same time, I have found that 20 defects were related to unit, so I understand my unit testing is poor. And that is where these measures, these matrices, can really help me define what areas needs improvement in my process, okay? So that's how exactly we use the matrices and measures and numbers to uh, do the analytical-based uh, test process improvement. The third one is GQM, which is Goal uh, Question Matrix uh, Measurement and Approach provides a framework to define, the, define and analyze the matrices that are tailored to the information needs of relevant project stakeholder. The measurement goal defines a quality aspect of an object that needs to be measured for a particular purpose, perspective, and context. These goals are refined into questions that define the quality aspects from the stakeholder's viewpoint. Matrices are then selected that provide the necessary information to answer the question. Okay, now data collected for the matrices answers the question to assess the measurement goal and satisfy stakeholders' information need. So the third one is more from the other's expectation. So certainly, I do keep collecting a lot of information to understand from my own view that what exactly needs to be changed. But there could be other people like developer, designer, and they can also be contributing that what exactly I feel or we feel that your test process is poor about. And that is where you can look forward to add more value. So GQM is more from the perspective of stakeholders. We try to understand what is their expectation from the process, and we look forward to collect data from them and then look forward to find the weaknesses. So taking a quick example, if you talk about things like retrospectives, their developer can come and tell me that, hey, your test cases are poor, or maybe your test cases, or when you submit a defect report, the defect report does not have all the information, and we have to always write you back that please provide some more information, and then you provide it in the second attempt, maybe third attempt, but this is what is not up to the mark. Now, if you see this, this is not something which I observe, this is something which my stakeholders are observing and they expect me to improve this in my process. And that's what is GQM. The GQM talks about collecting information from the other stakeholders, trying to make your process better from their expectations, their needs, and which in turn improves the test process altogether. So this is how different analytical approaches can be used in the organization to help organizations do better with their test process improvement. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.